All right, my friend, in this video, I'll talk about three lessons I have learned from Silicon Valley Bank failure. Let's go. All right, to be clear, I do not have any money with the Silicon Valley Bank. I do not bank with them, although I am in the Bay Area, but that's not the bank I'm banking with. But there are lots of lots of powerful lessons that I want to share with you as an entrepreneur that we can learn from this experience because I can only imagine how much headache. <laughs> when I want to explain it, my head will be headache me. Yeah. <laughs> This chaos has created for so many entrepreneurs, small and big. Yes, mostly they deal with 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 big uh, startups with millions of dollars in funding. But at the same time, I think whether you are just starting out as an entrepreneur or whether you are established business owner, there are lots of valuable lessons that I want to share with you from this whole shenanigans and this this absolute disaster that has happened. Before we go any further, Let's talk about really quick, you know, what caused this bank to fail. So this bank, Silicon Valley uh, Bank, did not fail because they were doing some shady things, uh, because they invested some shady and risky cryptocurrencies. It's, it's not why they failed. Basically what they failed, because they got so much money, I mean, billions of dollars in, uh, on, on, on their books, and they were thinking, okay, what can we do with that money? So they invested that money in United States bonds. And, you know, United States never has uh, defaulted on their bonds. But what happened, they invested the money in those bonds at very low interest. And as the government was raising interest rates, those bonds, uh, you know, the interest rates in those bonds got higher and higher. So what happened when they needed that money, there was, there was nobody to buy those bonds. So let's say they bought some bonds at 2% interest. Now those bonds are about 4%, something 4.3. Uh, and they needed to unload some unload some of those bonds, but no one's there to buy them because why would they buy bonds that could earn only 2% when they can buy bonds from the government that earns 4%. So they had to sell them at discount. So that's number one. And the more panic was created, the more people panicked and it's called bank run so bank run basically means where everyone goes and withdraws their money uh, at the same time so panic spreads and everybody runs to the bank try to take money bank uh, money out from the bank and the bank is not designed that way to have one to one right if they have if you say you have a dollar in there in the bank they're not going to have the whole dollar in there waiting for you usually they invest that money and because this whole chaos yeah, panic was created and panic created this really ultimately this problem that they had to keep selling more and more assets till I finally ran out of money and could, couldn't fulfill uh, all the obligations. At this moment, when I'm recording this video, uh, looks like government is stepping in and they will make everyone whole. Uh, basically, they will give money to everybody and, and, and everyone will be fine. But I can only imagine, you know, how much stress this created for for all the business owners and so many other people. And I want to always protect myself and my business. And I want you to take away these three lessons that I'm learning. And hopefully you find them helpful. And if you do find them helpful, hit that like button and consider subscribing. So let's go and cover these three lessons. All right. So lesson number one, and I'm probably going to create a, a separate video on this topic. And that is you do not want to bank with one bank. You do not want to keep all your money in one bank. And this is really, really, really important because what happens when you keep all your money in one bank, when something like this happens, all your money is in one bank, right? It seems so simple, but most people don't want to deal with multiple banks. They just want to keep everything in one bank because of convenience. And that is true. And you might say, hey, right, is, you know, you know, why would I keep managing multiple banks? It's a lot of work. Hey, I hear you. Uh, but there are many other reasons why you would want to keep your money in more than one bank. And here's number one. Number one is exactly what happened right now with Silicon Valley Bank is the fact that if you can, something happens, you can't access that money. You don't have money to pay your bills, to run your payroll and so many other things. And so you're stuck. But the bigger reason why you would want to keep money in one bank is because every bank is unique. Every bank has different products and you want to work with multiple banks so that with one bank, you can maybe get a good line of credit. With another bank, you can get better credit cards. With another bank, you can maybe have better customer support and cheaper wire transfer. So for example, in my business, I use two banks mainly for my main business because I have many businesses. 
For my main business, I use uh, US Bank and Navy Federal. And you might ask why? Well, US Bank is a very established bank. They're, they have a lot of products and great credit cards, fantastic credit cards. And then Navy Federal, they have phenomenal, phenomenal limits for lines of credit. They have uh, phenomenal uh, rates on wire transfers, receiving and sending out. So for example, every month I pay hundreds of dollars for receiving wire transfers because a lot of people pay us through wire. And I went like, why am I paying these crazy fees when, when, when Navy Federal doesn't charge anything? So I saved hundreds of dollars just focusing that moving those wire transfers to Navy Federal and keeping some of the other business over here. So I have a lot more flexibility and that's why I would recommend that you never ever keep your money with one institution. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two, you do not want to keep money where you can't access quickly. So this is a little bit different. So for example, what happened with a Silicon Valley bank, because they wanted to earn some money from the money that was sitting on the books and not earning anything, they wanted to put in safe investment. But what happens with US bonds, you, 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 you have to mature those bonds, whatever it's, you know, year, two years, three years. Well, I'm not quite sure exactly what terms they signed up for but you have to mature those bonds before you can take your uh, profits, your interest. So obviously, if you want to say, sell them earlier, a lot of things have ch uh, changed. For example, the rates have gone up, up and you can't find buyers for those bonds uh, unless you're willing to send, uh, sell them at a, at a discount, at a loss. So because of that, I always suggest that you have money uh, where you can access very, very quickly. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs making this mistake where they put a lot of money in cryptocurrencies, for example, and then cryptocurrencies drop and their business need money. Now they, they, they need to sell the cryptocurrencies at a loss. Like, don't do that. Make your main thing the main thing. If your business is your main thing. So if you want to invest in cryptocurrencies, maybe put a couple thousand dollars in, depends how much money you have, but don't mess with, with your majority of your money for your business. Because what I notice a lot of entrepreneurs, they get distracted and they put money in different places in real estate and crypto and all that. And when their businesses are slowing down, uh, and they need cash, they panic because they can't access that money uh, quickly. So you do not want to put money where you can access immediately because it, it can kill your business. Because, you know, when times are great, everything's fantastic. But when times get tough, that's when you'll, you'll need money. And that's often when everything else will be suffering and, you know, uh, dropping in value. And, and, and you, you might get your money back at a huge loss if at all, if you can get that money quickly. So super, super important. The other thing, what I always say, you want to start applying for business line of credits and things like that before you need the money. You want to have multiple lines of credit ready to go. So that way, if ever difficult times come in, you can tap into that money because it's easier to apply with these banks when the times are good because they're more lenient. They're, they're more willing to give you this line of credit. And once they give you often, they don't do, do you know, very seldom they, they go back on, on their agreement and take away that line of credit very, very seldom. So once you have established a relationship, usually those lines of credit will stay because when the times get tough and everyone's panicking, banks usually are more reserved and they will not want to give you that money at all. So lesson number two, do not put money where you cannot access it quickly. And lesson number three is this is very, very common, but the one to remind you, do not listen to mainstream media or any media at all, even to YouTubers like myself, because you need to use your common sense. Because what happened right before as uh, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed, Jim Cramer was talking on, on, on his channel, on his show, how SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, is one of the best banks out there and, 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 and in, the, in the returns I expected to be phenomenal. And he was just talking about how incredible this bank is. My best performer year to date is SVB Financial, don't you want? And then literally a couple of weeks later, this bank went out of business. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. You would think that, you know, watching this, this show, you think this person knows what he's talking about. Nobody knows. So whenever you listen to a YouTuber or, 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 or any major news channels or read a blog article, always use your common sense and make decision for yourself because nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going on and do not trust mainstream media. All right, in summary again, three lessons I'm walking away from this experience, just watching and luckily I haven't been uh, hit by Silicon Valley bank failure. So three lessons that I have learned. Number one, work with multiple banks. Do not keep your relationship exclusively with one bank. In some ways, of course, it can help you. But in my opinion, I like to like options. So do not work just with one bank in your business. Number two, lesson number two, 
do not put your money where you cannot access it quickly that's huge when you need money you want to tap in those reserves fast right very very quickly and also set up some reserves some set up some lines of credit so that way when you need money you don't have to look for it it's ready to go because usually with the lines of credit you only pay when you take that money out if it's sitting there 100 grand 200 grand 300 grand you're not charged typically with most banks you're not charged for that money sitting there unless you use it and lesson number three do not listen to mainstream media do not listen to mainstream media because most of them they don't know what they're talking about and use your common sense so thank you so much for watching if you got some value all i ask is appreciation for this hard work that we put these videos together give me a thumbs up consider subscribing if you are interested in mindset how to make money build wealth and leave a legacy because that's what this channel is all about my name is Ryder Stalash and i'll see you in the next video